I mentioned earlier that one of the first studies of gender and news was published in 1975, but it was the Fourth World Conference on Women held in Beijing in 1995 which really kick-started a focused attempt to do something about gender inequality in society more generally and sought a global mandate for a radical agenda for change. That agenda became known as the Beijing Platform for Action. The Platform for Action comprised 12 areas of concern which needed to be addressed. Area J focused on the media and proposed the increased participation and access of women to the media, including to decision making and improving their representation. 20 years later, at the Beijing Plus 20 conference, held in New York in 2015, a discussion was held to determine progress on the achievement of that ambitious agenda. You will not be surprised to hear that the conference delegates agreed that society remains unequal and that the goal of gender equality continues to be a work in progress. The latest set of global goals, the Sustainable Development Goals, includes gender equality but do not include any mention of the media, which is an odd omission given the importance of media in perpetuating gender-based stereotypes and thus undermining the goal of gender equality. Let's now consider how women and men are represented across the contemporary news landscape. In the same year that the Beijing Platform for Action was developed, the Global Media Monitoring Project collected its first set of data, recognising early on that media monitoring would become an important tool for gender advocacy and a form of activism in its own right. Since 1995, GMMP has published a further four reports, one every five years, with the latest produced in 2015. The GMMP relies on volunteers from around the world who work in national teams to analyse the news on one day across both mainstream and digital formats. The 2015 report, Who Makes the News?, was published in November of the same year and drew on data gathered from 114 countries. It covered 22,000 stories written or presented by 26,000 journalists. The headline findings were that of the people who appeared in news stories on TV, radio and in the press, 24% were women, an improvement of just 7% on the 1995 situation. In terms of the reporters of those stories, 37% were women. The statistics in relation to Twitter and online mainstream news stories were depressingly similar. Where women do appear in news stories as subjects or sources, their presence is different and less frequent than men. Women are more likely to feature in a narrow range of roles, often as victims or the wives or girlfriends of famous men more likely to speak as mothers or celebrities or celebrity mothers or mothers of celebrities, more likely to speak as witnesses and as the voice of public opinion. They are less likely to speak as experts or professionals. In addition, women are often sexualized and commodified, their bodies appearing to be the most newsworthy thing about them and elite women are just as vulnerable to the media's trivialising tendencies as any other woman. Sarah Macharia, who coordinated the GMMP study in 2010 and 2015, believes that surveys like GMMP highlight persistent problems for women and the news agenda. When women act outside of normative expectations, they will often provoke a particularly hostile media response. And a good example of this is when women commit crime, doubly damned as deviant, both by their behaviour and their sex. In addition to the Global Media Monitoring Project, other studies which have also looked at women and men's visibility in news over longer periods, at regional and national levels, have found exactly the same patterns. What these results tell us is that the news is dominated by men 
by men's concerns, men's voices, men's actions. In all geographical contexts, those men belong to the ethnic majority. They are usually elite actors, often politicians when we consider front page stories, with significant social and economic status. The question we have to ask ourselves is this. If women work as lawyers, politicians, teachers, civil engineers, farmers, in the real world, why are they not represented in these occupations in the world of the media? Why do women have to symbolise the eternal victim, the trophy wife or the grieving mother? Why are women so often denied agency, authority and power?